so much, Decca, for talking with me today. I really appreciate it. I have a few questions for you about your life as an activist. The first one is, what events or beliefs in your youth led you to become an activist? I think going back, living in Somalia, where we had a government that was oppressive to its citizens, and also coming background of my father actually fighting the government prior to that and himself experiencing colonized country, it was always the conversation in the house, you know, how some countries in the world have uh, rights of their citizens. And it always made me, why we don't have that? You know, what can we do? And you can be as much activist inside, but at that time we couldn't do it outside because if you do it, then you can be killed, you can be arrested, you can be tortured, so many things that can happen to one. But I always had that in my inside that we have to do something, we have to write something. Also looking into some of the uh, poet people that was in my country and entertaining folks at the time, uh, singers and poets will write things in a way that can look like okay, but if you really read down or read it into those words, it is uh, anti-government, anti, you know, resisting and saying, we don't like what we are living in. We don't like the way we at. You cannot argue that. One can say, yes, this is what it means, but does it really mean that? So that kind of fascinated me and even write things like that as a young person and just read it into our friends and family members who do understand uh, we cannot say it outside because as a young person and a woman, it was very difficult for uh, their parents and to do such thing. And then you end up being put in jail or tortured, things like that. So I was always being careful, but it's been always inside me and also reading books about the, uh, our country being colonized by the British and the Italians. Also, I read all of those young people who were resisting and dying for the country and making sure that they do not want the, colon uh, the colonizers to stay in our country. So I always have that inside me. It was really different times when I came in here. It was more so, Oof, this is great. We are in a country that's free, we're in a country that everybody has rights, but then staying here for like a few years, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, what's happening here? The blacks and the whites and the Latinos are things, really, there is huge disparities in people when it comes to education, when it comes to health, when it comes to, you know, racial profiling and all of those things. How can we navigate this system that you don't even know, you don't even understand? So it took me a while to get to know what's happening and get to understand really how systems work. Once I get to know those things, I start really becoming activists, mobilizing and talking to people about how to stand up for their rights. And uh, if they don't know how to do it, they can reach out to community leaders such as me so that we can find them lawyers and things like that. I've seen a lot of those disparities, especially when the person is coming from another country and an immigrant and doesn't speak the language, does not understand the system, easily somebody tells them, you're fired from your job. They will say, okay, fine. They may be really telling the truth, right? I said, no, you cannot do that. You, ha you can fight it. You can say, what did, they, what did you do? Why did they fire you? So what continues to motivate you and give you courage and guide you? I would say a lot of young people here are not really does involved in social justice, but does not understand how to go around those systems and navigate it. And as I said earlier, you will see a, a young people who will say, this is right. This is what we're supposed to be doing. This is how it should happen. They don't understand the politics behind it. They don't understand the, the consequences behind that. I give you an example. My daughter, um, when she was, I, I think maybe 16 or 17, or when everybody was starting to not stand up for the flag, she was representing her school for the school board. And she didn't want to stand for that. I said, no, you need to stand up. I know that you feel this way. I understand that. But this is a whole different thing. You know, tomorrow, 10 years down the road, you might run for something. And people can say, look what she did. 
things that kids do in her age. You have to think, you know, ahead. So it is really very important for us as the uh, older people to really guide the young generations and tell them what's right, what to do, what not to do, and then up what you believe in, but in a way that is respectful to all. Where do you find your courage? I think I would say my kids and young people all over. And each and every time I see them doing some kind of a specific engagement, I'm like, this is what the future should look like. How can we do more and reach out more young people like this? And we can even, you know, kind of change reaction kind of thing. Those things really motivate me. And I just love seeing young people doing the best they can do. But I think they would be even better if they have some folks who are older than them, folks that they trust, folks who are within their community guiding them. I'm grateful for Pius, a good friend of mine, Pius Ali, who is doing a youth program. He is engaging youth to be a leaders of the future and doing a lot of civic engagement, inviting a lot of black and brown people who are either holding office or are leaders in their own communities just to listen and learn from them. Finally, what advice do you have for young activists? I think uh, listen to uh, what's around you. Listen to your community leaders. Engage more people. There is a saying in my language, what you do not know is within your sister or your brother. That doesn't mean your, your blood sister and black brother, it means your human sister and brother. If I don't know something and I'm talking about it, you can say, you know what, Deca, I have done something similar to this 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and this is what worked for me. So that is the kind of collaboration that I will advise young people to seek. I've seen a couple of places that are youth, the youth-led organizations are putting older people to not speak while they are talking, you have generation of wiseness, gray hair is here, who've been here before you, who know more than you do. And I, I compare that also coming from Somalia, when an elderly person or elder is talking, you just have to sit and listen and soak all of that knowledge in your brain. I give example to my kids and they know it. Thank God they grew up with my mother and they said, mom, my mother never went to school. Does not read or write in her own language. But things this woman knows is just out of this world. And my kids were like, how does she know that? We call that wise and elder. That's what we call it. So now she went back to Somalia and my kids just cry every day. Like, we want a grandma back because the fact that what she contributed to their life, I think, is something that I couldn't have done it. I try to explain to our youth that and say, listen to your older people, because at the end of the day, we want them to be the best people they can be, best leaders they can be. If we say something that is negative, the kids will take it in a, in a way that is heavy, but that doesn't mean bad or anything. It's just an advice. So take the advice. It's okay to take it. And then she will tell them about something that happened in 1960, 1958. The memories she got, this woman is just out of this world. And then she teach them how to cook. And she left, my, my youngest is 20. So my mom left, uh, went back to Somalia when my youngest was 15. And she said, now I can go back because these kids are really smart. They can, you know, navigate any system and they can cook. <laughs> they can cook something they can eat. So now I did my work. I'm like, but what, what about me? <laughs> I still need you. Also, if you look at the, our indigenous people, how, how much they cherish their elders, it's just so important. Because we have so much, so many allies that are really standing within us. And I tell this story all the time. I would not have been able to run for an office and become city council for South Portland unless I had all of these relationships I built throughout the years. That's how I became. Once I said I'm running, all kind of people said, I will do your website. I will do the mo mobilizing. I will do this. I will. It is always so, so rich 
to do or to connect with people and create community and build relationship. Thank you very, very much.